emergency. Um, Denmark started recently thinking about banking system resilience. And for example, if, if power went out for a week, how would you buy groceries? So they're working on a system in Denmark where, um, where your card payments would still go through during that week um, with um, the banks um, and the retail sector sharing the risk there. Um, in Lithuania, you're seeing um, a lot of stockpiling medicines, and part of that is uh, an EU push to start 22 uh, medical stockpiles in 16 member nations. So the EU's role is really um, pooling resources, and it can kind of wake up some of the countries that have less of a tradition of preparedness. Um, they really sort of, the EU is going back to its roots. It was born um, to safeguard peace in Europe um, and to take care of security for its citizens. And this is exactly what it's starting to do more now. One of the key guidelines that, that is coming out as part of this is asking people or advising people to stock food and water for 72 hours. Just talk us through how that's playing out in, in places like Finland and Denmark. So the idea of, of 72 hours is to buy time for the authorities to organize a response to whatever the crisis happens to be. So if they can rely on just regular people like you and me to be prepared um, to have food and water in the house and be able to stay there um, without authorities immediately coming in to help, it buys them time to muster a response. And it also... Sure. So again, make sure in your refrigerator that you have a thermometer that you know that your refrigerator is working correctly, that it's 41. It was spoken by Paul. And because the haven was not commodious to winter it. Super hits of the 70s and 80s. 1150. CKOC.com. <laughs> behind it is, is fascinating as well. Cathy, thanks so much for joining us with the details of your reporting. That's our north. And that will make sure that your food is safe uh, on the hot side and just keep the cold food cold and not leave it to have any questions, you know, they can ask you, you know. As if everything Donald Trump does that he doesn't like. They will vote later on a proposal to reverse changes to the country's pension system, which is one of the major reforms passed under Emmanuel Macron last year. Our Paris reporter, Caroline Conan, joins us for more this morning. Caroline, how likely does it look at this stage that this government will fall over the budget? It's actually pretty uh, likely. The risk is pretty high. You've seen in the markets over the past couple of days, the spread between the French and the German tenure rises, uh, rising to the highest since 2012. So uh, clearly there's a lot of anxiety on the market that this government is going to collapse, if not next week, perhaps the week uh, before uh, Christmas. And today we're actually uh, going to have this uh, interesting possible vote on the uh, repeal of the pension reform. And it's going to be a test if, it, if there is a vote, uh, because uh, the national value of Marine Le Pen might join forces with uh, the left wing, which could uh, obviously uh, uh, be something that we would see uh, if there is a no confidence vote over the next uh, few days. So uh, clearly, uh, my court supporters are very anxious. Uh, like they put 1,000 amendments for example, today on this vote uh, on the, the pension reform, and Le Pen has been arguing over the past few days uh, that clearly uh, the no confidence vote is. is is, is on the table if she doesn't get her way on the budget, if she doesn't get her red lines uh, go through in the negotiating process. Is there any sense that those negotiations will yield anything for Marine Le Pen? What, what are the key things that she wants included in the budget? So uh, there are a few things. For example, pensions, uh, uh, indexation on inflation. You know, this is something that uh, Michel Barnier wanted to delay until the middle of next year. Uh, she uh, doesn't really agree with the new proposal of having like uh, some of it in January, some of it middle of next year, because really she doesn't want pensioners to have less money in their pockets, especially. Uh, those low uh, income pensioners. Then the second thing uh, she said was a red line uh, our prices on electricity. She doesn't want to raise any taxes on uh, electricity. Also on medicine prices, uh, one of the things that uh, the Barney government proposed uh, in this budget uh, is to raise.